So it's not too late in the day, but I don't feel like stopping. I feel like doing some of this. Now, one mistake I've made already is I, you know, the seams here, I meant to line them up in such a way that a conduit clamp would line up with a conduit hole, but I kind of missed my mark on that. I think just drilling that in there will be good enough. We'll see. But either way, that's, uh, that's our challenge for right now. I want to start doing some conduit because that's what I have planned for this place. And I got a secret weapon. This guy right here, that's one of those uh, Milwaukee pipe cutters. It's designed specifically for copper pipe, but I've modified it to cut EMT. So that's going to be interesting. These things won't cut EMT at all stock. So it, it has to do with how their gear and pull system, it, it, it steps and lines up with the copper pipe. Half inch copper pipe is a slightly different diameter than half inch EMT. I wanted it to cut EMT. I got it cutting EMT. Uh, the only problem is if I uh, run this thing without a piece of pipe in it, the mechanism jams up so badly I gotta take it apart to unjam it. EMT is fun. Half because I'm a computer geek and, you know, hard tubing. Except I gotta remember how to do this. Right there I printed out the uh, instructions. You see there is going to be math and equations involved in doing this. You don't just, you know, bend her up and give her. Now one of the first challenges is I need a junction up here somewhere to get to the lighting. So I got to figure out how to get that pipe up there. So from here to here, we're looking at about seven inches, here to here, 58 inches, seven plus 58. Oh, we're starting with the math already. That's a total of 65 inches. So I'm going to start off by cutting off a piece of pipe that's about the length that I need because you know, working with a whole length of pipe is uh, quite difficult. And because of the way my mind works, I have forgotten the number already. 65 inches. That's right here. All right, let's fire this thing up. Yeah! And then, I want to make it smooth on the inside. It's the only thing about this pipe cut method then I don't think there's any other way to do this that would be any better. You know, I kind of need to know the angle on my roof here. I forgot how to do this. Oh, like this. I'm gonna use this thing, it's a plumb bob. 76 degrees. 76 degrees. Yeah, I guess so, eh? Because a 90 would be this way, so that would be 70 in perspective to straight up. Now, if I get the pipe bender, Oh, there's a 60 degree. Oh, that's going to be tricky to measure that. Well, let's start. So I'm not going to bother with a box offset. I'm just going to go straight up. Look at that, about seven inches. I'm going to be a bit rusty. I got to remember how to do this. So, straight up is about 30 degrees. Keep going. It's not quite 90. Might as well bring it to 60. That's about 60. Let's try a, just a pinch more. How's that going to line up with the roof? I already tell you right away that angle's not there yet. Oh, it's not even at 60 degrees yet. All right, let's compare like that. Nope, still needs more. That's too much. That's back again. Wow. That's right. There we go. And I've definitely made it too long on this end. Yeah, you know what? I screwed this up already. It's too short. Actually, it's gonna be just right if I get this next bend correct. If. All right. Not the most room to move in here. Gotta make sure this is uh, perfectly straight and in line. Uh -huh. And I think that's just, okay, that's gonna be the opposite. What's 90 take away 76? 14 degree bend. Do we have that on here? We have 10. So if we go just over 10. Oh, oh. Just a touch more. 
Yeah, I think that got her. Now, if I want it here, pasted into here, and that seam there, that's going to miss my conduit hole. So what are the chances we can bend it this way? Well, I know we can. It's just a question of do I have the skill to do it? I think I'm gonna have to go get a better measuring tape though, because this is Milwaukee. Milwaukee, your auto lock does not auto lock anymore. And it's killing my groove. This, uh, this little master craft should do. All right, so we want the conduit here like that. We need to make it move over one and a half inches. Is that what you're saying to me? No, one and a quarter inches. So let me consult my documentation. Distance to obstacle, seven inches. Seven inches divided by 0.25. Oh my, I gotta remember how this works. I guess we can start with this mark here and then we need it to move 1.25 inches. So times two, the second mark is gonna be at 2.5 inches. I'm like totally not walking you through what I'm doing right now. We'll try to bend it here. And then the second bend is gonna be at 2.5 inches right here. And if I do a 30 degree offset, that should hit my mark. Can I even put this in the bender that way? Okay, that's totally gonna to bend it the wrong way. That will bend it the right way. So we gotta get it down on the ground. Ah, oh, you're gonna be that kind of dick today. Again, just getting the hang of it. 30 degree bend, straight up. Now, on our second mark. And that is not gonna be possible like that. I may have created a problem for myself. Cause yeah, I gotta bend this back this way. It might be too close together to do this kind of trickery. No, it's done like this. It's done like this, definitely done like this. We're gonna need something to put it up on. I'm trying to remember how this is done. <laughs> it's so easy to mess up this kind of thing. Cause you gotta look at it upside down and backwards. There's not enough leverage on that little peaton. Did I get it? No, I'm not even close. I was hoping to be more suave and graceful than this. Great, where'd my little clamp go? This is tricky. I did not do this nice. That bend is too close to the box. <laughs> so what's that mean now? I gotta chop this and risk ruining it because either way, it's gonna enter right about here, and that's probably not gonna sit nice. It's even closer now here. Yeah, I got this up. I need to put this back the way it was and cut all this out. Are you serious with me? I cut the wrong mark. I've gotten to a point where I'm just kinda eyeballing some of these bends. Correcting this mistake, I didn't uh, film it because well, there was cursing, there was swearing, and there was some figuring out. So roughly a 10 to 15 degree the other way to meet up with the box. We basically need this to bend down 10 to 15 degrees right there like that. Oh, okay, fall over. Okay, here we go. That's about 10, touch more I think. So, you know what? It's a specialty tool I forgot in the house. All right, are we absolutely sure I got the right point here in which to cut? Yeah, yeah, looks like it, just a touch before it even. Okay, right there. So now that should slot into there. Might need some extracurricular finagling. Yeah, yeah, that looks good, this looks good. Now the top cut, where's the top cut gonna go? So we have a box there, top cut is right here. Okay, okay. Let's just uh, go grab that top cut. Which should put me, oh, just a hair short, but it'll do. Okay, now I'm gonna punch out an actual box for this. Now where's my little peen ham? It should be in this compartment here. 
and we're gonna go back one. So this hole here, grab it out. Yeah. You wanna pull the connector in there. Okay, so we are just a hair short. I could have made it a touch longer, but it's gonna do. Number 10 by three quarter. Say what? I should use the half inches here. Don't quite need that much depth. Oh look, there's a screw hole right there, ready to go. Thanks, Obama. That is some secured conduit. Okay, now I gotta do this other part of the plan where I mark a couple holes. One there and one there. Cause there's something very specific happening in there now. I have to drill a hole up into that metal steel beam. I mustn't forget to chamfer and deburr this. Got to do, remember to do that to the other side too. Now, can I drill holes into this? Take some effort and I really should have safety goggles, but yes. Yes, I can. Now I need another one. There we go. That's two holes. Now you might be asking, what are we gonna do with these two holes, sir? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're going to tap them. Now that those holes are tapped, I should theoretically just be able to bolt that box to the above steel beam with the couple 632 screws. Yes, quite nicely. That box is not going anywhere now. We're gonna have to rearrange that. I gotta, I forgot to chamfer and dever that. So I gotta pull some of this down and uh, just fix on it a bit. Unfortunately, I don't know if that's happening with the box in place, so. Yeah, yeah, just fall down. It's a good thing I remembered this. Could have been disaster installing this without the chamfering. There, it's nice and smooth now for the wires to pass through. Along with this side, yes which is good because it doesn't go as deep as I'd like it. So, all right, once again, we pulled it back, finished up. Now, another thing I might consider doing is sealing those holes. I'm gonna have to bust open another tube of caulking so that I can just make sure in case water does get into the center beam, it can't leak back into the electrics. All right, we officially have our first piece of conduit installed. And that junction is going to service the lighting. They're gonna strip all the way down here. Those green watts. I also need to get a conduit five inch stub here. I gotta figure out how that's gonna work now. <laughs> Cause that's pretty much the next big conduit bend I have to do. So off here, five inches from there is when we're gonna start our bend. And then it's gonna come down here and then I have to do another one of those 76 degree bends downwards into a switch box. That means we also need a box offset bend. All right, let's see if we can tackle that. Now, how long of a piece of pipe you figure we need? About 16 inches, 42 inches, and 16. 74 inches. That's longer than uh, any of the pieces I've cut off so far, so I guess we're cutting a fresh piece of pipe. Fortunately, 90s are real easy. 90s are just a case of, yeah. It's 16 and a half, pretty much. 16 and three quarter, really. Take away five. So to the wall is 16. 16 and a half, even. Then we have to go five inches back from that. 11 and three eighths. So if we start our bend there, to the best of my knowledge, that's how it works. That or I'm gonna ruin another piece of pipe remembering how to do this. I did a really good job conduiting my um, other sheds. Five inch stub, don't fail me now. Yeah, that is correct. Of course, it's gonna be hard to measure because we ran out of space over here. Another eyeball bend. I want it to go downwards right about here, which makes sense to me. Okay. Again, 76 degrees, 40, 60, and burn. Let's uh, try that and then make corrections from there. Oh, it needs more. It definitely needs more. Now this isn't gonna be exact. It's not gonna land 100% where I might visualize it to land, but it's gonna be close enough. I'll be able to work with it. 
How's that degree? I think it'll need a bit more. All right. Now what do we got? Oh, oh, we're getting there, bud. Little bit more. It's just a back and forth. You know what? That's good right there. Perfect. All right. Now this feels like it's a touch long. Question is, can I trim just the slightest bit off this end? Just to say. Yeah, okay. Chamfer it. That's good. How's the other end? The other end didn't get cut. It's already good. All right, as is classic procedure, I need to punch out the holes. Need the hole here. Get a nice connector into place. Oh, we're forgetting the box offset bend. A little bit of a pain in the arse, but uh, that's fine. For box offset bend, that is, if I remember correctly, we make two and a half inch mark. And then after that, a two and a quarter inch mark, band it all around. So the idea is it's gonna be on the wall. It needs to pivot out. Then it needs to pivot back down. So I gotta take this one, about 10 degrees, just a little burnt. And then this one, oh boy. I should have started with this one here. That's gonna blow up in my face, especially since I don't know what to do with the other end. Sometimes you can put it up like this and then just reef on it. Like that, just a bit sloppy. There we go. So that is box offset bend. So that when box is tight to wall, it can meet it. Yeah. So that's in place. Let's pop the conduit up here. Wiggle it just a little bit. Conveniently, it looks like I'm gonna be able to use these existing screws. So I should be able to move this guy. Have it fall down, because that's necessary. Robertson what? Oh, I don't know. These Robertson screws are cheaply machined. I'll just uh, put it back in there with the conduit on. Okay, tappy tap tap. There. Now let's put a box on the wall. So, switch box. Oh, awesome. My offset bend is a little, if I put it there, I have a seam to go into. This is bugging me. I gotta bring that in a bit. Just a touch, bud, just a touch. That'll do. I gotta put it in this hole. Ooh, this is thin metal. This will be our first embankment of switches. These lock washers slip badly. Who put the lock in lock washers? Not these guys. Damn. Now these specialty tools are off. Useless for getting inside of these boxes, but. So I can maybe get it to hold this washer into place. Should be able to get it this one, yeah. How about the one in the box? So, power to junction, junction to switch box. Lighting is gonna go all down here. So seen here are the green watt lights again from the Canadian tire. And these are the ones that I wanna put up in here. Now if we're lucky, these conduit punch outs will line up. Close enough. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll need just the slightest snub of conduit. Oh look, here's a slightest snub right here. Is there even a slighter a snub? Oh, here's an even slighter snub. Will this slighter snub clear to aw? Oh, no. It needs to be a little bit longer. Oh, I think that slightness snub is the slightiest snub we can snub. 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 Chamfer it. All right, need to punch out another hole. Oh, forgot these boxes have hard holes. Pep. Oh, this lock washer is actually locking. I gotta take this apart quite awkwardly. Shown. Okay, we'll start with this side. Came out easy. Snug her up. So now the idea is we're gonna do one of these like that. Lines up nice. But we gotta do the whole drilly in the ceiling y thing again. Here, and here. Remember to grab some safety glasses this time. Oh, that's right center. I don't know if I can do one there. I think it's drilling up between the beams. I might not be able to use that hole. Yeah, I forgot. The beams have a seam in the middle. Wow, how far can I get in there? Okay, but can I tap that hole? That's the question. Looks like it. Can I get the tap out of that hole? Okay, I guess that'll work. 
Might as well do the same thing on the other one. I guess I'm drilling a channel between the seams. There's nothing behind that one. Okay, I'll use a different grade of screw. So, okay, screw's going in there. It's got one of those slip holes, so just slip it on and then like that. The other hole looks like it'll use a standard screw. Yeah. Moving down the line. Need another punch here. Yeah. Oh, so easy. Let's get another connector in there. Ah, oh, we can put the cover on for now. Don't need to go in there again till later. So, light number two. Where else we want lights number two? Right about there. That's dead center middle right there. And then light number three would probably be a little bit farther out over there. So they won't exactly be stacked symmetrically. That one had to start off set because of the junction. This one, oh yeah, that's right dead center. I like it right dead center. That one will move out a bit. Okay. Right, uh, huh. That should be enough. That is hard on the arm, sir. Pushing upwards is, uh, yeah. Let's push with my head. Oh, let's try that. I don't think that hole's any good. Oh, oh man, I just broke my freaking tap off in there. And that hole's ruined. No tap means no more mounting lights, which is wonderful. So I need to go get another 632 tap tomorrow. And I gotta not mount it that way. I need alternative mounting holes on this thing. Offsets. Oh, I don't wanna be done. I was having fun. Oh, what else can I do? Well, I can't do any more lights. Maybe I move on to doing a receptacle. My target is to have a receptacle like right here or here. I'm thinking here. So this piece should get me there, I think. And now is when we have to get into offset bends. That's three quarter inches. We know that much. And then we have to pick a hole. Any one of these holes will do. Maybe this guy here. That's box offset. That's like almost immeasurable. It's like a quarter of an inch. That's a one inch offset we need. So that's two inches of bend. Now we have to clear this obstacle. Eight inches. So we'll go eight inches. Now if we do a 30 degree, our next bend will be two inches in theory. I screwed up my lost offset bend. So 30 degrees is straight up. All right, All right. Then give it a complete rotation. Oh, I uh, started on the wrong mark again. That's okay, this is still gonna work. If I can keep it in the tool. Oh, that was the completely the wrong way. Nice. Okay, so I botched that up astronomically. You gotta think upside down and backwards with conduit bending. Oh, you're a bastard. Did I recover? Yeah, I think I recovered. So, right after this, this is gonna be about eight inches. I need to do a complete 90 degree. That's right at 10 inches. Yeah, that's about where I want it. How good did I do here? Good enough. Yes, good enough. So yeah, let's poke out this hole here. Put in a connector. All right, where's my little uh, mirror? Gotta go looking for a tool I haven't used in a little bit. Oh, there it is. All right. Box de receptacle is right there, but not quite. Get the stupid ground screw out of there. All right, so we want a receptacle here and we want it to fasten on those seams. So it's gonna mount like that, which means I need to level this. I wanna make it nice. Since this is going pretty straightforward, let's get a level on that. Problem is we're gonna need a box offset, eh? That's a 10 degree, two inches. That's barely gonna shrink at all. I think that's the trick with box offsets. So I'm gonna go right up to the box and we'll cut this off. Chamfer. Camera two wasn't recording, so you missed uh, the close up of the action. But now I'm attempting to do another box offset. I think this one's gonna be pretty sloppy. It's late. I shouldn't be doing this anymore. Oh wow. I think that's one of the most botched box offsets known to mankind. 
And then you just gotta flex them into place. And then you end up getting with a perfect alignment anyway. Oh yeah. All right. And because that's gonna have torsion, all four screws are gonna go in. You know what? Oh, that feels so solid. Oh yeah. I don't even think I need to clamp that. Can't really clamp on that angle. It's within 59 inches, so you don't have to. The question is now, I need to get over to here. Do I have any scrap pieces long enough? Nope, that's not gonna be long enough. Oh boy, we're gonna have to start fresh. So how long is this piece? This piece is a bit longer. It already has the makings of a box offset on it. Let's see if we can turn that into a box offset. Time to pull this guy up a little bit. Like that. Does that look roughly okay? Yeah, it does. Does it go the rest of the way? Okay. Gotta see if I can correct this. I unbend the conduit. <laughs> Sloppy, but it'll work at a pinch. Let's see. Oh, oh, okay. Let's punch this one out. Let's see. Yeah, almost. It's actually just a hair shy of being on the seam where I want it. If we trim down that side a half an inch, we'll hit our seam. Oh, actually need a little bit more than a half an inch, do we? Can we take just a little bit more off the end of that? Just a hair, just to say. Yes, we can. Fitting can be fun. That looks good. I'll put some straps up. And then, finally, we grab our little specialty tool and our pair of pliers, and we'll snug up those lock nuts. All right, yeah. Now, if you look at this corner, it's a bit sloppy looking. Truth be told, this is the first piece of conduit I tried to cut to do this guy. I botched it up royally, but I was able to salvage it and straighten it out and get some nice box offsets. So now, ta-da-da. So, it's gonna come down there. It's gonna go over there, and that's two receptacles. I have plans to add three more spanning the shed, but I think that's enough for tonight. It's a quarter to midnight. I was just in the zone, man. I love doing this. Beep. I just need to uh, get a new tap, new mounting method to get up there, get my lights up, and then continue.